Okay, everybody, buckle your seatbelts because the Michael Finkley Show has a brand new home. The Michael Finkley Show is now a part of the Greater Works Network on Roku TV. To watch, add the Greater Works Network channel to your Roku TV. Congratulations, Finkley. So let's talk about a topic that is sweeping the nation. We're talking about transgenders. Now, transgender is described as the following. Transgender persons are persons who gender identify as different from the gender they were thought to be at birth. Trans is often used as a shorthand for transgender. According to UCLA School of Law, Williams Institute, more than 1.4 million persons identify as being a transgender person in the world. Meet Tori and Victor. Tori is a trans woman. Victor is a natural born man and loves, loves Tori with all of his heart. They tell their story of how they met, how the world perceives them, and so much more. Take a look at their story. When I came across, across these two individuals across social media, I know I had to have them on because they have such an incredible story. Introducing Meet the Jenkins is Vic and also Tori. Hello, how are you? Hi, Michael, how are you? I am super well. Thank you so much for being on and willingness to tell your story to viewers that are watching our show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. And so we'll start with you, Tori. So at what point in your life growing up did you know that and mentally, physically, that you were different? Um, it was at a very young age. Um, I would say elementary school. I was I had already developed feelings for the same sex, and I just found like different guys, you know, very attractive. I know it's weird to say like, as a kid, but like literally, that's just I was like attracted to the boys. I felt like I was one of the girls, and I always hung around girls, and I just knew that once I was, you know, I was able to get older and take care of myself, then I live my lifestyle. Okay, and at what point in your life? Did you just say, hey, I needed to start going through this change physically? Um, well, it wasn't so much of when I decided because um, I grew up in South Georgia, so I grew up in a Baptist household. My father, mm. was there. so it was one of those things where you can't do, you can't, you're not grown until you're able to take care of yourself in every capacity. So I had to literally wait until I'm able, I was able to fully provide for myself. So I would say, like in like my like early 20s, like 2020, okay. right? It's when I started, you know, finally, you know, getting the courage to wear my hair, and, you know, get my nails done, and, you know, just be a woman, the person I felt like who I was truly inside. Okay. So which came, which came first for you, Tori? Was it the, the likeness of the same sex, or was it the transitioning to become a female? It was the just wanting to be a female, like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say I didn't sometimes wish I was born like as how I felt I was supposed to be, like as a woman. Um just growing up I was like dang, it was certain things that I wanted to that I couldn't do. So I was like, if only I was a girl, I can, you know, really fulfill and do everything I want to do and no one question me or tell me I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And I know growing up in the South, I'm from South Carolina myself, growing up in the South, that's hard, especially in a religious household. How did your family take that news on both sides? They are not happy. Well, they weren't happy. Um, my mom is starting to come around. Um, to be honest, my dad is still struggling with it. Um, well, I have two fathers. So the, the, the dad who raised me, he's having a hard time, definitely. Um, I haven't like really spoken in a long time, but me and my mom, we talk often. Um, she's getting to the point where she wants to actually see me now. So it's getting better. It used, I will honestly say it was worse, but 
of course, it takes time and, you know, patience and understanding. It. Um, I think they thought it was just a phase at a point, mm-hmm. like, I'm going to grow out of it. And then, like, now that they see, like, I'm, I'm working in corporate America openly as a Black trans woman in Texas, in the South, that's a, that's a statement within itself, because you don't see that in everyday society. And just to see that I'm prosperous in life and I'm not, you know, I could have I could have took a completely different path. So I feel like they're still proud of me in that aspect. They just wish sometimes that I would feel the old Tory. Gotcha. And how long did that transition take for you? Um, it took about a good five to seven years. Okay. Yeah, good five to seven years. Because I went through therapy. I I literally did it by the book like correctly like I I did research I looked up a doctor I um did therapy with my therapist I got blood work done to make sure my my um, blood levels and everything was um okay so when I do start taking estrogen it didn't like affect me in the negative way so mm-hmm. it was a long it was a long process but I'm so thankful that I took my time for my transition gotcha because you look gorgeous, does it does it um, still affect you in a mental capacity? No, because now it's just like to be honest, I I sometimes forget in a sense that I am like you know I was born as a male biologically sometimes, um, just because of how I I you know live my day to day life. So I don't even see that, and he doesn't treat me any different. He he treats me really like a queen. So. It's like out of sight, out of mind, in a sense. Right. And so you decided to leave Georgia and some kind of way you ended up in the great state of Texas and you ran into this cool dude named Victor. How did this come about? Um, I was just, I had actually just got off work um, and I stopped at the gas station. I need to get gas and I was going to grab like a snack or two. And I was walking in and he was walking out and like we glanced at each other and I was like, oh, he's kind of cute. And I was like, oh, okay. But I'm that person, I never say anything because I just, I'm just very precautious because, you know, you, I am trained. So, you know, not too many guys are, you know, comfortable with, you know, dealing with that. They feel like their pride or their ego is damaged in a sense. So I waited for him to make the first move. So when I came back out the store and I was going to pump my gas, he was like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, I think you're very beautiful. I would love a chance to, you know, yeah, I want to be your friend. And then my head, I'm just like, no. No, I know you was just going to play with me. I just know you just cool. So he just, he just kept saying, no, I really just, I think you're very beautiful. I, I really want to get to know you. Like, can I at least pump your gas for you? And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? This could be, this could be, it could be your next boyfriend. You never know. Like, see, you love you life. So, you don't never want to close close off your blessing. So I mean, I went against my my better judgment and you know, I, I let him pump my gas and as I get we were pumping he was pumping the gas, we was just talking, he was like, So um, what's your name? Where you like how you where you from? You know, just asking general questions about me. And it just made me feel different. Like it wasn't nothing about sex related, it wasn't yeah. nothing about, you know, um anything like that wasn't about who I was or what I like to do in the day-to-day life. So that attracted me to him because I thought he was who he had a personality. He was still a little goofy. Like he he has like this thing to where he makes these like these like silly faces and it like just cracks me up. So I was like, okay, I give you my number and we exchange something like I said. And the rest is history. I it took me a while to hit him up. But <laughs> what I did and we got to to talking and we ended up dating and going out, he became my best friend. I love it. And that's the way to start a relationship. Friends, and then we progress on. Victor, so when you first saw Tori, what went through your mind at that gas station? Three le- three three letter words. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just wow. Like um when I was coming out and I seen her, it was just like uh she just had this glow to her. Like I always tell her all the time, she just has this glow. Mm-hmm. You know, like she's just um very confident in herself. She just has this 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 aura of confidence, this aura. She knows what she wants, she knows where she's going, she knows how to get where she's going. She's willing to do what she needs to do to get there. 
Um, and I could just see that ambition. I could see that um, perseverance. So, you know, it just made me want to approach it because uh, I've always been that type of person. Right. And uh, it was just that I just felt that, that I don't know that chemistry that it just drew me. So I was like, man, I wonder if she would uh, give me the opportunity, you know. And, um, you know, when I when I uh, went, you know, pump her gas and everything, she allowed me to do it. And uh, and I was I was sincere when I told her, like, I really want to start up as your friend because, you know, previous situations taught me to be friends first. You know, don't just jump in anything because I didn't want to just because uh, really, to be honest with you, I really was just looking for a friendship to begin with, you know, and I wasn't looking for a relationship because I was I was I was over it. I was tired of it. You know, so I was just looking for somebody that I could talk to. I love to conversate, someone I could just vent to, someone that I could um, listen to, and, you know, that can accept my goofiness. So, you know, um, when I first called her, you know, because uh, I had to call her first, of course, you know, which is supposed to happen. And because um, I was texting her and she really wasn't responding like that. So I texted her. And I said, well, you called me. Call you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I went on and called her. And, um, to be honest, that first conversation, we just vibed. Um, and I just felt like it was just a, a chemistry. And um, to be honest with you, the reason why I know it's really a chemistry there, I'm gonna kind of fast forward. Like today, I actually went to the corner store to grab a few things. And uh, when I went to the corner store to grab a few things and I came back to the door, she was like, um, babe, I forgot to tell you why you were there to grab a uh, dental stick. Uh, uh, Cause she loves the little dental floss. And uh, I had um, a whole bunch of things in my hand and I, you know, showed her the dental floss. I was like, I already grabbed them, you know, like I, I already heard you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it was already there, the chemistry. It was yeah. there. It That's was already, amazing. It was already a vibe. Um, yeah. we, we did have that vibe. Like the other day, um, I was actually um, going to Walmart because um, she likes to eat a salad and um, I was actually grabbing some lettuce and as I was leaving, she was like, um, babe, I forgot to tell you, you can get some lettuce from Walmart. And I was like, yeah, that's already done. You know, we just have that type of vibe. And I just knew from the beginning, like, it was this, that call, that soulmate call, yeah. you know? And I honestly didn't believe in soulmates from the beginning, but as I, you know, as we're, we're growing in our relationship, I actually feel like we are honestly soulmates because it's, it's just too genuine, you know? Uh, I love it. I love it. And and so, Vic, before you met Tori, um, how did you identify yourself um, in the sexual sense? Were you straight? Were you gay? Were you bi? Were you curious? Mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, um, I labeled myself as bisexual um, because um, I was attracted to um, just people, you know? I yeah. just um, different features on different people. You know, when you walk into the store, you see Gucci, Versace, you know, I was just attracted to different uh, characteristics and different things in different people. But as time went on, I realized that I wanted um, soft. I wanted a woman. I wanted those features, you know? I mm -hmm. wanted um, someone that I can hold and she feel a certain type of way and you know, that voice, I wanted to hear that soft voice. And so I just knew I wanted a woman, but I, um, this is my first time dating a, a transgender. Mm -hmm. And um, I just knew what I wanted. I said that I wanted to date uh, a transgender because I honestly feel like uh, just the whole thinking, the whole way of thinking, the whole way of what you've experienced, you know, you can kind of relate to, you know, certain ways that I think, mm -hmm. certain patterns of behavior. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I just felt like it was a certain thinking process that goes along with it, you know? So, you know, I just felt like we could be compatible and I made the right decision. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha, gotcha. And we know that, right? When we, when we just know, we just know, we can't explain it. We can't explain it at all. But when we come back, we're gonna talk about the conversation you all had when she first we revealed that she was transgender. We'll be right back. Coming up, more with Tori and Victor. We'll be right back. On the next Michael Finkley. CEO of Spoken Entertainment and celebrity host and producer, Stephen McCoy. Mr. Personal Development himself, Justin Rambo. Next Finkley. Monday. 
Looking for a mentoring program for your young male between the age of 6 and 18 in Columbia, South Carolina? Well, look no further. Big Homie, Lil Homie Mentoring Program is the program for you. Under the leadership of Mr. Jamal Stroud, Big Homie, Lil Homie is a 50C3 nonprofit organization that caters and mentors at risk youth that come from single parent homes. The organization caters to young males between the ages of 6 and 18 within the greater Columbia area. The organization is devoted to shaping and molding their life into great men of society. Big Homie, Lil Homie organizes male gatherings, discussions, and even educational assistance devoted to guiding and leading them into a positive light. Making a positive attitude will help in transforming a life regardless of what is experienced in life. For more information on Big Homie, Lil Homie Mentoring Program, visit our social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Calling all trio, gear up, jag, and other college readiness organizations. Hello everybody, it's Finkley with the Finkley Experience. I am here to offer you information about our College Readiness Cohort Series. This College Readiness Series includes college applications, SAT, ACT prep, scholarships, financial aid, the mental mind state, HBCU versus PWI versus technical colleges, and so much more. You know this is helpful because it's actually like making me change my college plan. <laughs> really? If you're interested, visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com or just email us at michael at thefinkleyexperience.com. We're looking forward to working with you. Welcome back to the Michael Bingley Show. We are still chatting with Tori and Victor about their transgender relationship, and they're just so open and honest with us, and I'm so excited about it. I learned a lot um, as well. And so when did the conversation happen, Tori, that you actually told Victor about yourself? Um, when I started catching feelings, like more than just a prank, as we were prank, as I stated prior, I was like, you know what? I need to go ahead and let him know because I don't want I don't want to string him along and have him think like why 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 did you tell me this was up? So like I believe it was one particular night he had called me and I was like, Hey, how you doing? Like I wanna to talk to you about something. And he was like, Okay, cool, what's up? I was like, um, I don't know how to say this, but um I'm trans I'm a transgender woman. Mm -hmm. And it was like silent for a little bit and he was like Girl, I already knew that. You didn't have to tell me that. <laughs> Wait, yeah, hold on. <laughs> Wait, Victor, how did you know this already? Um, to be honest with you, um, it 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 was. I'm not gonna say obvious as far as like, um, looking at her, mm -hmm. but I could see the reserve. Like when we would talk, and when we would um actually like go out just as friends, I could just see the reserve. It was something that was. Um, she was holding something in. And I'm the type of person, I'm a Pisces, I'm in tune with the universe. I'm, I'm, I like to know things, you know what I'm saying? I'm in tune, I like to know like how things work, how things, just why, why, what, when, where, that's just me. And um, I just used to just, you know, lay in bed and be like, what is it? It is something about her that she's hiding. And she, it's not the fact that she doesn't want me to know, maybe she's just scared if she tells me something of change our friendship and I just keep pondering on it. I was like, she's perfect. So what is it that she thinks is imperfect about us? And it just hit me. Right. She she has to be a transgender. You know what I'm saying? She just has to be a transgender. So I start paying attention. I like, you know, I would um because we would take pictures together, you know, just friend pictures and just take little pictures and I would blow the picture up and kind of just dissect the pictures and kind of look and just, you know, pay more attention to her. And I'd be like, okay, you know, start seeing the little signs. And, like, hey. and that's when I told her it's okay. I never told her that I knew though. I was just waiting for her to tell me because I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable. Gotcha. I told I told myself when she's ready, she'll tell me. Gotcha. And what type of relief was that for you, Tori? It was just like, okay, like this he could actually be the one. 
Because like I said, we already had that friend, and he was really like my best friend there on my sister. So I was like, oh, wow. And it was just, I just felt so happy. And then like time just progressed. And then when he finally asked me like to be his girlfriend, mm-hmm. I like cried. I was like, oh my God, I, I would love to be your girlfriend. And, you know, we just, we kissed and the rest has been history. Oh, wow. And so, Victor, <laughs> Victor, with you having a, a girlfriend, um, a transgender girlfriend, what does your family think? Um, well, with my mom, to be honest with you, she never even mentioned it. Like, um, I had talked to my auntie the other day, and she knows, of course, she talked about it, and she even told me, she was like, your mom doesn't mention it because she wants you to mention it first. It's kind of like the situation with me and Tori, with, you know, her telling me first. And my mom loves Tori, like, adores her, like, bought her Christmas presents, like, Wow. Talks to her on the phone, checks on her, always tells her, tells me to tell her she loves her if I'm not around at the moment. Uh if she's not around at the moment, excuse me. And uh I always ask about her, um, if I'm around, put her on the phone. Like she 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 knows, you know, she just um doesn't mention it. I mean, because to her, I already know to her she's like, um, y'all are in love. I respect it. Why bring up anything to make an uncomfortable feeling? Right. Where you have to explain something when there's nothing to be explained about love. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my friends, on the other hand, um, some of them uh, haven't really uh, been acceptable of it. Some of them have been distant from me, yeah. you know, because uh, they really don't uh, understand. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I have so many friends, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd rather have a love, you know. And um, now as far as like my auntie, they love me and they love her. They adore her. Uh, they can't wait to meet her because um, most of them live in California, Florida, Georgia. So they can't wait to meet her. So when we start doing traveling, they'll meet her. But I always send them pictures. And um, yeah, they adore her. My kids, uh, my daughter, she adores her. So yeah. I know it's only been a few months, but whenever the wedding time comes, I hope I get an invite. Of course. Hope I can invite. You will definitely get an invite. There's All no right. <laughs> you will definitely be invited. All right. Y'all heard it right. I heard it. All right. <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to the wedding, I'm just going to let everybody know. Um, I just honestly feel like because I know through her transition that she's been through a lot. Yeah. You know, I don't know personally, but because of the story she tell me, like I said, I can't know firsthand, but because of what she tells me, I can feel a little bit of what she's been through. So I want to give her an amazing experience when it comes to a wedding. She deserves more than just a courthouse. You know what I'm saying? So, Y'all will not make me cry on my own show. That's what I'm not going to do. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. So in the going forward in the future, how do you all see yourselves helping others that are in trans relationships? I am just have those conversations. I was just talking to him the other day, like once we get, you know, more established, maybe do something like a retreat to where we, we reach out to different trans couples and invite them out. And, you know, we all just spend time together and, you know, we, we talk about different topics and, you know, different things that's going on in society. So that's something that I think would be a very good thing. Of course, you know, continue, you know, reaching out directly to people um, where we go live on Instagram, we bring people on the live and we allow I them to ask that. Us, yeah. yeah, we allow them to ask us questions and you know, just get to know us on a more personal level. So it's just more so about, you know, just connecting with the people. So, and we we honestly, you know, people say that the most um successful things that happen to you in life happen by accident. Mm. You know, when most people just put too much into it, it kind of takes a little bit longer and they frustrate themselves. When you just let things happen, they just happen they just all together. You know, so our focus has been to help people, but we accidentally found our niche. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So even when we were doing our TikTok, our Instagram, and uh, through the social media, we was always like, because we would watch other um, influencers and we was like, what should we do? You know what I'm saying? To help her bring more people towards her. And it kind of just was like something just said, people are automatically drawn towards you. 
Mm-hmm. Just be yourself. You know, don't try to be like anybody else. Exactly. Just be yourself. Don't worry yeah. about those extra things. Don't worry about nothing else. Be yourself. And um, when we actually um was doing Instagram Live, somebody had sent us an invite. And when we brought them up, um, and we talked to them and everything like that, they were like, you've helped us so much. Uh, I, I love y'all. And we, after we got off the um, Instagram Live, after talking to like four people, we was like, this is it. We found our niche. We found our niche, you know, helping people and actually inspiring people like that. And we actually have people that, that like actually tune in. And it's not the same people. It's always different, a rotation of different people mm-hmm. that's tuning in that has so many questions um, that want advice on how to deal with their boyfriend or um, how is it being a trans and, you know, working in corporate America. Like different questions that, you know, yeah. they didn't want answered. So we're just continuing to like, just enhance on that platform and just get to know them. Yeah, I love this, y'all. And what I love to end my sessions with encouraging words. And so what encouraging words would you give to persons that are still trying to find themselves or maybe in a relationship as you are together? What would you say to that individual or individuals? I would say being um, the unapologetic, living, Mm -hmm. living your truth, live for yourself and love yourself because once you once you love yourself and you're unapologetic it'll say it'll open so many doors and you'll just be like okay i, I don't care what that person had to say i'm going to be me this is what makes me happy regardless of whatever so just stay true to yourself and don't do it don't do it for no one else you're going to be if you're going to live your life live it for yourself it's only get one yeah live it for you victor yeah. I would say the same thing. I remember the first time um, I told her um, that I really, really like to ask, do you love yourself? Because I told her you can't love me unless you love yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I would always say, love yourself. Um, don't worry about what other people think about you. Um, because like you said, you only live once. You only got this one life. So be happy with it. But also don't burn bridges. Um, if somebody doesn't accept you for who you are, don't push them away. Give yourself a little distance, you know, but don't completely cut people off either. Just, uh, and don't hate them. Still love them. I always love everybody. No matter what, no matter what they do, no matter how they uh, hurt you, I always love them. And I always keep that door open just in case they need you, in case they need to come back. You know what I'm saying? And I just honestly feel like um, I always have love at the forefront because love is the greatest power of all things. I love that. I love it. Do it for you, but in the process, love yourself while you're doing it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. How can they find you all on social media? Um, you can follow us um, on our Instagram, meet underscore the Jenkins, um, as well as our YouTube, meet the Jenkins, and um, yeah, our TikTok, meet the Jenkins. Everything oh. is me. Meet the Jenkins, y'all. Meet the Jenkins. <laughs> we have again Tori and Victor. Thank you so much for being being with us today. And again, telling your story in your own words. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Need a little motivation. Timothy Clifton is with us every week on Mondays to get your week started with a little motivation. All here on the Michael Finkley Show. Everybody, welcome back. So for the month of February, every Friday here at the Michael Finkley Show, we will be featuring an African-American male or female that are doing some incredible things in the world around them. Introducing you to Robert Woodbury. He is the first African-American, youngest mayor of Mullen, South Carolina. Take a look. You to again Robert Woodbury. He was with us on last season as he was talking about his run for mayor of Mullen, South Carolina. But I present to you the first black mayor, the youngest mayor, the, the 42nd mayor of Mullen, South Carolina, Mayor Robert Woodbury. Thank you so much for being with us <laughs> again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the invitation. Always good to uh, to be on your show. It's, it's such an honor. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And I like when I first started this segment, I said I have to get Robert first. I definitely have to get Robert first. We grew up together. We're from the same area. I've seen the amazing things that you're doing. So how has it been for you? How yeah. has it been? 
yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's been awesome. You know, uh, the journey just started uh, as far as in the office of mayor uh, was councilman for four years. So I was able to really get my hands dirty and see uh, where the need was, uh, which led me to run. And so I'm really able to see um, where it is that we have to work and, and what we have to get done um, and, and how the, the people just have an expectation of something new, something great uh, happening here in the city. So the pressure's on, the pressure's on. Gotcha. And since you've been mayor thus far, what have you done in this particular position? Yeah. As of today? Gotcha. So since we took office, um, uh, you know, just a week after the election, we just kind of just hit the ground running. One of the biggest issues that we um, that we had uh, was a trash collection here mm -hmm. in our city um, with just various vendors and in service not being up to par for over a year, uh, literally going weeks without service within our city. And so uh, council and I went to work. We, we came up with a plan. We, uh, uh, we uh, made sure that uh, the desires of the people who elected us came first mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, we made it happen. Uh, we were able to purchase uh, two brand new trucks, um, able to uh, get it staffed. Uh, we have a residential and commercial truck. We have uh, dozens and dozens of dumpsters. We have thousands of carts uh, that, that are coming in. Uh, we have the entire initiative branded and uh, we're ready to roll. So we've really been able to do some big things in just a small amount of time. And I think that was one of the largest um, just gripes that our city had at the time. Uh, but it shows that when we come together and work, we can we can really accomplish some things. And so the list just goes on. We've been dealing with litter initiatives, uh, cleaning up our city, uh, a lot of uh, behind the scenes things, getting ordinances in place and just uh, just cleaning up a lot of issues that we have just with the with the day to day. Um, and I think something that we can all be proud of. But I'm, I'm ready for uh, everything that we have coming up. You know, we have roads to be repaired. We have projects already in the works. Um, when I say the best is yet to come, I, literally the best is yet to come each month. Uh, we have a, a list of things that we're, we're tackling. I love it. I love it. And what are you hearing from the citizens of Mullins as they have their first black mayor, the youngest mayor? What are you hearing? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can honestly say that there are a lot of people that are, are proud, you know, especially from within our community, uh, when I, as, as far as of where I grew up and, and especially within the African American community. Mm -hmm. I think one of the, the greatest joys and um, one of the most um, just moments that really just, just, just make it, you know, uh, so real is when I come uh, in contact with uh, some of the elders of our community and, and they explain how proud they are um, to see the first black mayor uh, and everything that they had to go through and everything that they endured in their time. Um, it really, it really just sinks in because now uh, we're literally walking on um, or in the tracks and in, in the paths that were made by people that came before us, you know? And so that pressure, uh, you know, you just feel the pressure, you know, it's not just do a good job, but it's, you know, you're representing all of us at this point. And um, that that's really what, what makes me proud um, just to have the opportunity to serve. I love it. I love it. And it does my heart so well, because again, just seeing the growth of where you used to be to where you are now, it's just amazing to see. Yeah. So what's on the docket? What's next for the citizens of Mullins yeah. and also for Mayor Woodbury? Yeah, well, we got, a, like I said, a lot of great things that are coming up and we just want everybody just to uh, stay tuned, so to speak. Um, every month we do the mayor's update. We do uh, Let's Talk Mullins on a local uh, cable network and uh, we like to try to be as transparent as possible um, in in the uh, social media platform. So you can just kind of see what we have going on next. But I'm really excited. I'm really excited. We're going to see a growth even in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah, we're seeing growth and we're seeing innovation. And so uh, we have a really, really great council who's committed to innovation, who's uh, committed to uh, just getting it done, you know, and so I'm, I'm excited about it. But we have a lot of great things coming, a lot of great things coming. I love it. You heard it here. I love it. My hometown are, is doing great things, great That's things right. and with a great leader. Ladies and gentlemen, Mullins is own President Barack Obama. He is Mayor oh, wow. Robert Woodbury. Thank wow. you for being on. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. We'll be right back. On the next Michael Finkley, CEO of Spoken Entertainment and celebrity host and producer Stephen McCoy 
Mr. Personal Development himself, Justin Rambo. Next thing, please. Monday. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I do hope that you learned something from this show. Tori and Victor have opened my eyes to a realm that many persons are very close-minded to. So thank you so much for being so open and honest and telling your story. And we wish you here nothing but success in you fulfilling your journey in life. Thank you so much for being on. And thank you so much, Amir Woodbear, for being on as well, being the first African-American and youngest mayor of Mullen, South Carolina. Much success to you. On the next Michael Finkley, we have some heavy hitters. I love it. Monday, we have Stephen McCoy and we also have Justin Rambo with us as they tell their stories of just following their passion, their dreams, and living in it. I love it. That's on Monday's show. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Michael Finkler Show, ring that bell for notification. We'll see you in email saying, hey, new content's uploaded. Please listen to us on Spotify and also on Apple Podcasts. For up-to-date information about The Michael Finkler Show, please visit our website at michaelfinklishow.com. Thank you so much for watching, and guess what? We will see you on Monday. Have a good one. <laughs>